Brad Schultz with Magnum Systems and I would like to talk today a little bit about dilute phase and dense phase conveying. Um, what we'll talk about today is what is the uh, what is dilute phase and dense phase conveying, what is the difference between the two types of conveying, and when would you use dilute phase or dense phase conveying. Um, probably the, the first thing I would like to stress is the 80-20 rule. 80% uh, of the applications out there in pneumatic conveying are dilute phase applications and 20% and is other, mostly dense phase. And this is just the world we live in. It has nothing to do with what we build or my competitors build or anything like that, but it's just the reality of the market. 80% of the applications that we do are dilute phase applications. So what is dilute phase, dense phase conveying? They're, they're the different modes of how a material moves down through a conveying line. Um, it is 100% the material, not the equipment that determines whether it is dense phase or dilute phase. Um, there's a lot of definitions, a lot of articles, a lot of opinions uh, out there, and uh, the least arguable opinion or definition of the difference between dilute phase and dense phase is saltation velocity. And that is at what velocity uh, is required in a convey line to keep the product suspended or does it start to fall out and anything above the saltation velocity is defined as dilute phase anything below the saltation velocity is dense phase uh, so I will tell you that I'm 100% behind this definition uh, it is like I said the least arguable definition of the differences um, some of the other definitions and stuff that might uh, cause some controversy is um, solids loading is a definition of dense or dilute phase. Uh, sometimes you'll read papers, talk to people that'll throw out a number. Uh, any, any solids loading above this is dense phase, any solids loading below this is, is dilute phase. And, and solids loading is, is really how many pounds of product I'm moving with a pound of air. Um, and uh, we use it all the time to, to look at the, the health of a system but not necessarily to define whether or not it's dilute or dense. Um, convey pressure is a definition of dense or, or dilute. Again, it's not true. Um, I can do dense phase systems at two PSI. Um, I can do uh, dilute phase systems at 30 PSI. So pressure is not uh, a definition of dilute phase or dense phase. And then the other one is the equipment. I mentioned in an earlier slide that it's, not, it's the material, not the equipment but a lot of people will tell you that if you have a blower on your system, it's dilute phase, or if you have an air compressor, it's dense phase, and the reality is, is that's not true. Uh, again, it's what's going on inside of the convey line that defines uh, dense or dilute phase. Um, I mentioned solid loading earlier. Um, solid loading, the reason that it's not a definition is because truly it's a result of what's going on. It's not something that we as uh, manufacturers of pneumatic conveying systems can actually determine ahead of time. It's a result of, of everything we put into a system. Uh, and also pressure is a result, um, not a variable that we put into the system. That's why they, we tend to stay away from them as definitions because they're truly just results uh, of all the inputs that we put into uh, sizing a system. And again, it's the material. It's not the equipment that determines dilute phase and dense phase. Um, the reason that, that, that some of those uh, definitions get uh, are, are undefined or a little bit screwy is because of the fact that there's there's five components in a, in a pneumatic conveying system. It's the distance that we have to convey the product, the line size that we're conveying the product through, the pressure that is required to do the work through that distance, and the rate that we're trying to move, and the velocity of the air. Those five things um, as you change one, the other one, something has to change uh, with the other ones. And, and we call this the powers of two. And the powers of two are really simple, that if I take a system that I have out there right now, or I've designed, and I'm getting ready to uh, install it, um, if I want to double the rate in that system, then something has to change. In this case, the convey pressure would need to double, or the cross-sectional area of the pipe would have to double, or I could cut the distance in half. So again, if I have a system out there and I want to double the rate, doubling the rate causes one of these other two things, these other three things to change. It has to. It also works the other direction. If I cut my rate in half, 
That means that the pressure that I would see in the system would be cut in half. Um, I could cut the cross-sectional area of my pipe, which means that I could go to a smaller size convey line, or the distance could be doubled. So the powers of two work all the way through. The distance I want to do is going to double. So therefore, the convey pressure would need to double. The cross-sectional area of the pipe would need to double. So again, like if I want to double the distance I'm moving something, if I wasn't a five inch line, I'd have to go to a six inch line. Um, or I would have to tell my customer, you can't do that rate, you can do half of it now. Works the other way uh, with the powers of two. If I want to do half the distance, the convey pressure would be half, the cross-sectional area could be half, uh, or I could double the rate that I was doing in that system. Um, the powers of two though, doesn't work all the way through the variables. Velocity does not follow the powers of two because Velocity is, is really the starting point for all system design. Whether we are a, a dense phase system or a dilute phase system, we actually start the design by what is the velocity that this material requires to work. And then that number never changes, even though all the other variables where we put in line sizes and distances and capacities and all that stuff stay as variables, velocity will stay uh, constant. Uh, and it'd be different for dilute phase and different from dense phase, but it will be constant. Uh, solids loading does follow the powers of two, but it's not a variable we can control. As I talked earlier, I can double the distance, I can cut the rate in half, all those things. Solids loading is just something that is going to be a result of that. Now, we use it all the time as a gut check um, because we, we know that if you double the distance, you cut your solids loading in half. So we use it as a gut check, but it's nothing that we can really go out and say we're going to be at a certain solids loading and work all of our, our math and magic to get there. Um, so talking a little bit more about the difference between dense and dilute, um, these are from a 30,000 foot level. So this is way up looking down at the very basic differences between dense and dilute phase. And in a good dense phase system, the product is moving down the line about three miles an hour. Now, three miles an hour, I can walk faster than the product's moving. Um, a dilute phase system, however, that's a 40 miles an hour is about average for a dilute phase system. Um, if you would look here, uh, the pipe there, that is a dense phase system. Um, the product, dense phase, dilute phase, you're gonna see both, but this product right here is running at about three to four miles an hour. And you can see what's in what they call a dune flow mode. Nothing that we can control, it's just this product likes to run like this. Um, you'll see a slug go by and then it relaxes a little bit and then before too long, another slug will go by. Um, but again, I can walk to the end of the line and beat that material there. Uh, dilute phase systems, same product, just in a dilute phase uh, convey line. Again, you see that there's, you can't really see the particles there. They're all moving too fast and they're moving consistently. Um, the way I like to look at it is, is a dense phase system is kind of like a bucket brigade. Um, you fill up a container, uh, you pressurize it, it conveys down the line, you relax, you fill it up again, um, but it's kind of like a bucket. Uh, where dilute phase is more like a garden hose. You turn it on and it starts moving, you turn it off and it stops. Um, again, from 30,000 foot, most dense phase systems will run high pressures, 30, 40, 50 PSI. Most dilute phase systems will run 10 PSI on a pressure system, 10, 12 inches of mercury on a vacuum system. Um, dense phase systems almost always require a compressor and a dryer. And that's not a, a misspelling, uh, that is dollar signs because compressed air and drying of air is very expensive. PD blowers are what you'll typically see on a dilute phase system, uh, cheaper to operate, um, cheaper to build. Uh, when would you want to look at which way you'd want to go? Would, you, would your product say, I want to go dense phase, I want to go dilute phase? Um, the first question you really have to start with is, can I convey my, new pet, my product pneumatically? And any dry bulk material, powders, flakes, granules, they can be pneumatically conveyed most, with a very high degree of confidence I can say that. but. The question you should really ask yourself is, is can I do it and maintain the desirable qualities of the product? That's, that's probably a more important question 
Um, and the examples for that are is, is dilute phase systems. You don't care if you can break it up or you can't break it up or you don't care if you do. Great examples, flowers, calcium carbonate, clays, coal dust, dry bulk materials that you can't destroy even if you tried or if you did beat it up a little bit, nobody would care. Uh, dense phase though, however, has got a little bit different category uh, if I'm doing an abrasive material because uh, speed and abrasive things don't go well together. Uh, sand's a good example of an abrasive material we can convey dense phase. Uh, here's another one, popcorn. Um, popcorn, we do not like to scuff or crack any of the kernels. Um, so as long as you can move popcorn dense phase, you won't damage any of it. Uh, put the popcorn in a dilute phase system and you have popcorn meal, um, an undesirable quality. So a lot of times in, in dense, when people think dense phase, they look at it and they say, I've got an abrasive material or a friable material, so therefore I should go dense phase. True, but um, again, the differences, there are different modes, but, but this is the, the line right here. It's 100% the material, not the equipment that allows you to make that choice. Um, so when you look at, this is a great example. This is an article written in 2008 by a very smart guy who talks about the differences of conveying sand. And because uh, we get calls all the time that say, I got sand, I'd like to convey it dense phase, can you do it? And the problem with that is, is that it all comes down to a couple factors. Is the sand a very uniform particle size, meaning that it's uh, all the same shape and size, whether it's big or little, it's all the same, making it permeable to air or fluidizable. And this article talks about um, if you have a sand system, you had a dense phase sand system at your plant, and it would run day in and day out like on foundry sand. If you were to go get a load of beach sand right off the beach, dump it in there, I promise you, you would plug the line every time. And the reason for that is, is that you got big particles and little particles mixed together. If they were all big, great. If they were all small, great. But when they're big and little mixed together, you're going to plug the line every time. Um, regurgitating this again, material must be either permeable, like popcorn, plastic pellets, foundry sand, or fluidizable. Portland cement, granite dust, it has to be one or the other to work in a dense phase system. Um, one of the things you can do to determine if you have a good material for dense phase is to look at it through like a sieve analysis. Um, this is a sieve analysis of a material that is pretty much 100% between 16 and 50 mesh. It's a very um, big particles, not a lot of distribution. I would say that this material is permeable and would work well in a dense phase system. Um, this is another sample of a different product, and you can see here where we're between 50 and 450 mesh, uh, and we're averaging almost 10% of the product being a 450 mesh, and almost 25% of it being uh, uh, 50 mesh, which means I got lots of little holes that this stuff can get trapped in. So when you have big particles mixed with little particles, dense phase is not an option. So in summary, if, we, if you could walk away from this presentation with, with a little bit of information, it would be this. Uh, remember that it's all about the speed and it's the speed that the material's moving. Um, dilute phase systems, uh, material's always suspended. It never stops, it keeps going all the time. Uh, dense phase systems is gonna be a start and stop and start and stop and you should be able to walk faster than the material's running. It's also the material, not the machine. Um, with the right criteria, meaning a short enough dilute phase system or a long enough dense phase system, the material may actually be in the opposite mode of what the equipment was designed for, meaning that with a short enough dilute phase system, we can actually make the product go dense phase. And in a long enough dense phase system, you might be dilute phase by the end of it. Um, so it's, it's the material, not the machine that determines it. Permeable and fluidizable. Those, those materials you want to run in dense phase has to be one or the other. It cannot be a material that's got a mix of particle sizes, not allowing it to be permeable or fluidizable. Um, also, the powers of two. All pneumatic conveying systems um, follow the powers of two. Anytime you double the distance, you cut its rate in half. Anytime you double the pressure, uh, you can move more material. So remember the powers of two. If you have any questions, please comment below and we'll get, we'll get back to you or reach us through one of these three methods. Thank you.